Hello and welcome back and that is right in today's video I want to talk about the best SSD to upgrade for your PS5 whether you've been following this channel while I've covered this subject for the bulk of 2021 or you're just coming into this straight away trying to make your first time purchase this is a surprisingly complex subject in the old days where you had your PS1 with your little memory card or your PS2 we could kind of get that big adapter thing then you had your PS3 that had a SATA hard drive port then you had your PS4 which had the same SATA connection but people started using SSDs to now the latest generation utilizing super fast SSDs now these SSDs has to be set are not like the media that came before it these are drives that are incredibly small but incredibly powerful and potent and although the ps5 is barely a year old the um, architecture behind these ssds known as m2 nvme also based on pcie uh, bandwidth there has been around for a number of years and the result is that there are a lot a lot a lot of different ssds on the market and for those that follow this channel you will know i'm all about the data storage baby and in this subject in the ps5 i have found a real resonance because the storage media they've gone with although it is arguably more complex and arguably a little bit you know bit of a learning curve for some people out there it is definitely the most sophisticated storage in the market right now and certainly opens the door to tremendous opens the doors to tremendous bandwidth and speed down the line now in today's video i'm going to talk about my five current top picks for ssds to buy at the start of 2022 now by that what i mean is if you are watching this halfway through 2022 in the summer there what's the future like is covid still an absolute pain in the bum um if you're watching this later in the year there may be other ssds on the market i'm making this now for people at the start of 2022 that have got maybe a little bit of the cha-ching lying around maybe you've got some crimbo money maybe you've got yourself a brand new ps5 and you've looked at the games that you want to buy and you've looked at the storage inside and gone wow i am going to need an upgrade i'm going to sensibly buy an ssd early door and if you're doing that or maybe you've seen ssds on the sales you want to know what's the best pick because you don't want to do this and every year you don't want to repeat this choice you want to get it right first time and that's what today's video is after all of the ssds that i've been testing to date i think i've tested about 30 to about 32 different ssds with the ps5 there's only about 40 to 45 ssds that are fully compatible with the ps5 that i would personally recommend anyway um and of those, of all of my testing, I've got them down to these top five. Now, again, if you've watched my previous videos, you're going to be able to guess at least three, maybe four of these. But if you're coming into this subject new, I hope you find this video very helpful. Now, my recommendations are based on the following. First and foremost, for the be the very best, they got to give you that full performance there. Now, when I say that these SSDs are going to give you more than 7,000 megabytes per second, this is the PC benchmark supplied by the brands themselves based on the architecture and the build of the ssd in question this is not the ps5's own internal benchmark which is slightly different because of the way it measures the ssd and what it needs from it for gaming and i will touch on that a few times in this video but all of the ssds that i'm going to talk about today are top tier they will give you some great performance they don't give you the same performance for reasons that i'll explain throughout the video but in their own individual way each of these ssds is the best because although i'm saying these are the top five and i am going to count down while i do it that's not strictly true because each of these ssds i have picked for their own specific reason and if that reason resonates with you there's a chance that just because i mentioned the fifth ssd down the end is the last one that doesn't make it the best for you these are based on speed these are based on perf um, performance overall bandwidth these are based on value these are based on build quality they are based on durability they're based on a numerous different factors so without further ado let's crack on with our first pick That's right, our first choice is a tiny bit left field. A number of you have heard of the Gamix S70. A data, a massive name in the world of SSDs and memory as well, have their own series of gamer SSDs. Indeed, this SSD does arrive in two different forms. It arrives in the chunkier SSD version here and the Blade version. And it's the Blade one I want to talk about right now because the Gamex S70 Blade not only has been one of those SSDs that has not given in to having ludicrous pricing, unlike a lot of SSDs, some of which I'm going to mention in this list in the last 12 months, but on top of that, it arrives 
in a multifaceted form and takes advantage of a very unique architecture. So this again is the 1TB model. We've removed the heat sink, the heat shield there from the top and that's the first thing I wanna talk about. This SSD arrives with a heat shield but unlike a lot of the heat shields that I've seen over the last six or seven months, they are flimsy kind of metallic things which are good but they're very, they don't feel quality. Um, this arrives with a genuinely metal heat sink there and again this panel here is very very thin but given the space allotted to you in the ps5 that is definitely the sort of thing that a lot of you uh, more minimalist buyers are going to go for there now i mentioned the architecture this ssd arrives with an inner grid controller inside which again when you look at a lot of the ssds in the market particularly some of the ones i'm going to talk about today they take advantage of a very well-known ssd brain a cpu a controller known as the Fizon E18. One of the most cutting edge SSD controllers in the market that allows tremendous performance if the rest of the SSD architecture in NAND, where the data lives, memory, the hands of the thing moving stuff around, and the general build quality overall, all adds up to that faster performance and Fizon's controller allows that. However, because it's so ubiquitous across the industry, they're kind of allowed to charge what they want for their components, which then gets reflected on the end product which is why it's good news when there is another SSD controller manufacturer out there, in this case, InnoGrip with their Rainer controller, the IG5236. And this controller, in some cases, actually outpaces that Fizon controller there. Not in all cases, and there's little give and take or whatever, but it means that the SSDs on the market that have got the InnoGrip controller, like the Gamex Blade here, arrive at a much better price point per terabyte and on top of that still have durability in some cases um, up to 0.5 drive rights per day and overall of all of those integrate controllers this is the the big daddy for me this is the one there, there's been a few that i've featured on the channel the viper patriot for example but this one is the one that is the real package and again if you are concerned about that heating and again that's included in the price you can always get the chunkier one which again will stop you applying the PS5 cover heat plate, but it's still a great SSD. In all of my testing that I did, this SSD just kept coming. It kept doing the great stuff. It kept loading those games at the top performance. I think in Last of Us Part 2, it was particularly good as well. I think it was one of the few SSDs that challenged the WD Black as well. And of course, the WD Black is going to be in my list today at some point. Um, but... Overall, when it comes to uh, my top five SSDs, if you want to get the best value for money and still get top end performance, definitely the Gamex S70 Blade from Adata. That is right. It's one of the SSDs that I think is so universally known, not just in the gaming industry, but in the creative sector as well. The Samsung 980 Pro that's now been available on the market for some 14 to 15 months at the start of 2022 is definitely still in my top five. Now, I can hear a lot of you hearing this after looking at some of my testing and being a mite surprised. Of all of the SSDs that I've tested, I've kind of always included the Samsung, but in a lot of my performance testing, I was always utilizing a 250 gig SSD. It was the only one I could get hold of at the time of those recordings before shortages. But on top of that, even the larger capacities when you benchmark them on the PS5, tend to give you a benchmark of around 6,000 to 6,100, when there are other SSDs on the market that are cranking out 6,500. So why is it still in my top five? Well, a few reasons. First and foremost, because its price point. Its price point on the market is just almost unbeatable. It's been in the market for a long time. It even challenges the likes of the WD Black in terms of its price point. Now, there is a feeling that there's going to be a new follow-up version of this, the way that the brand seems to be talking and behaving, although I will add during that that if they do release an upgrade to this, it more than likely will be a, PS, a PCIe Gen 5 SSD. Now, Another reason that this still remains in my top five recommended SSDs to buy at the start of 2022 after last year's picks is simply because it's one of the best heat sinks I've seen for a while. For those that weren't aware, the Samsung 98 Pro, when it arrived on the market, did not feature a first party heat sink there. I hate seagulls. It arrived just bare bones and you had to get your own M2 heat sink there on board, enterprise or not. Now, a year goes by, loads of other SSDs arrive on the market, and then finally this one pops onto the scene, and it has that 
first party heat sink there on board and their first party heat sink it is compact as hell it is solid it is um aer aerodynamically designed for the fan work there and although it is designed for both pc and ps5 utilization I will go as far as to say that it's one of the more discreet heat sinks out there. Very simplistic design, very straightforward and easy on the eye shape. And if you're installing it in the PS5, it still leaves some available space in that M2 slot for surrounding airflow when it's in use. Still a great SSD, not the best in the market, but in terms of its price point, it's by far one of the most affordable top tier SSDs in the market, even with the heat sink. Now, moving away slightly from the idea of the best price top tier SSD on the market from Samsung, I want to talk about one of the best value drives on the market. Now, value is one of those words that when I said that, some of you heard it one way or another. Value can mean many, many things in this way. What I mean is, for what you're getting in this package, this is easily one of the best SSDs that I've used in a long time. But again, in, in, in that context of where it lives in the food chain, it's not the architecture of the thing. It's got that fires on controller there. It's got 96 layer NANs there it's got some great performance there even at the 1 and 2 TB level it even arrives with that thermo heat shield already pre-applied it's a nice heavy bit of metal which we used in the previous videos peeling away it's a metallic strip that also assists heat dissipation already pre-applied the other reason I talk about it now of course is you can get the bundle. You can get right now the Sabrent heatsink included at pretty much the same price as that Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus. So although I have recommended several times Sabrent's own heatsink because of all of my testing, for me it found the best middle line between being not too overly invasive inside the system while simultaneously um, providing fantastic uh, to heat dissipation there. But at the fact that now if you buy the 1, the 2 and even the 4TB drive that you can get a a version of it with the heatsink included at either no additional cost or some tiny little token cost is what really cements it in this list and puts it ever so slightly ahead of the Samsung there because that great architecture you're getting but also because of the PS5 heatsink slowly but surely arriving at no extra cost if you buy it in the bundle version it just makes it a solid choice for me for PS5 upgraders there and of course when we did our big face-offs against all of the drive brands out there, this drive was always in the top two or top three at all times. For me, a solid SSD upgrade for your PS5 and still strongly recommended in 2022. Of course, it's the WD Black. Let's be honest, of all of the SSDs that we've talked about in terms of compatibility with the PS5, even if you've come into this subject incredibly vaguely, you've just come at it really left field, you're trying to upgrade the PS5 for someone else, I've got to say, of all of the SSDs, the one that gets the most market coverage is that WD Black there for several reasons. One, that heatsink on board, beautifully petite, living inside that system there uh, in the PS5 there, but also, much like the Samsung, because it's been a Around in the market for more than a year the result is the pricing on this is just a1 now although the right performance isn't as good as um, all of the SSDs that I talked about today the read speed is still top notch and when it comes to console gaming that's ultimately going to be the most important thing particularly in the PS5 environment there it's also worth highlighting again that you can get this SSD in quite small capacities as well if you want to go in small early doors and you're just looking for a small 250 500 gig upgrade there but also the heatsink on this model again has come down in price quite substantially after Black Friday and the Christmas sales that I've seen thus far and the result is that now getting this drive without the heatsink becomes kind of a, a no-brainer to just go for the one with the heatsink the pricing's better and Ultimately, of all the drives that we've talked about, very few have had the huge amount of recommendations as this drive. It stood up for itself in all of my testing. There's several games that it was absolutely bang on the banana in terms of performance. There are a lot of the open world high IOPS um, games there, like GTA and Red Dead Redemption, when we tested those. This SSD loaded it faster than every SSD that I tried and faster than the internal PS5 SSD as well. Why is it not in the top pick, which is my performance pick? Well, 
for one simple reason. It just runs a little hot. If you've been looking at all of my uh, temperature testing videos where I've looked at different PlayStation heat sinks and I've looked at the first party heat sinks as well as the third party standalone heat sinks, you'll know that in all of those tests, this WD Black always seemingly ran the hottest, no matter what we were doing. It wasn't unbearably hot. It certainly wasn't hot enough to consider it degrading against operation, but still, it did run a little hotter than the others. And when you calculate that over hours, spread it spread over games that you play for days, the games that you play for weeks and months and years, it can make a tiny bit of a difference. Still, nonetheless, an incredible SSD that more than earns its place in my top five recommended for 2022. And unsurprisingly, there at the end there, the Seagate Fire Cuda. I'll be totally upfront with you. There was a time about a month, month and a bit ago, that this was going to get overtaken by the WD for me. And a lot of you thought the WD was the best SSD on the market right now. And again, neither one of these is the best SSD. They're just better in their own ways. But there was a time when this Seagate Fire Cuda drive for me wasn't quite at the top of the file. But then, of course this heatsink version. For those that watch my heatsink comparisons, you'll know that this heatsink is without a doubt one of the best I've seen on the market. Now, it's not the best for PS5, there are alternatives out there, but with all of my temp testing when we did our PC benchmarking, this heatsink massively overshadowed all of the others. And although the heatsink is a separate purchase to the SSD, you can't get this heatsink without this drive, which already gives it a tick in its corner. Now, in terms of architecture, it has the same Fizon e, um, E18 controller that uh, another SSD in my lineup, our lineup here today had. That's the Brent there. But the difference is this SSD arrives with 100, 176 layer 3D TLC NAND, which massively increases the durability, which massively increases the performance, I might add, as well, being the fastest SSD in both read and write across this whole table there. And it includes two years of data recovery services as well, which you may or may not ever use. But the fact still remains that it's an incredible SSD there. Now, when it was launched, the price was a bit you know, higher than the others, let's put it like that. That price has stabilized a little bit. It's still probably the most expensive SSD of the five I've talked about here, hence why it's not gonna compete with the likes of the Samsung or the Gamex there in terms of price and value and stuff like that. But as a complete package, and in terms of what you are getting for your money, for me, the Firecuda 530 is still the optimal choice. Just bear in mind that if you're not a pro gamer, if you're not gonna clock up five to six hours a day gaming, at least, and you're not going to really be hitting that like an esports player or a YouTuber that's streaming content, you may never really reach this drive's full potential. So just know there's a reason I call it the pro choice. And if you're not a pro, there may be SSDs on the table that you should maybe consider. But this has been my five recommended SSDs to buy for PS5 upgrades in 2022. I've got one other video coming up on this subject where I'm going to talk about the value SSDs and hopefully that'll be out in the next day or so. And that's for those of you that really aren't looking for high-end, you know, pro gamer uh, performance. You're looking for value. You're looking for a much more affordable option that still does the job there. And so stay tuned for that. But thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, click like. It helps me understand what I'm doing right and makes every video better than the last. Take advantage of the articles linked in the description to guides on the best ways to upgrade your storage, the best drives to go for, and how to understand the difference between one or the other so you can choose the right SSD for your needs. There's also the free advice section over on NAS Compares. Genuinely free, manned by two humans, me and Eddie, answering all your queries completely free. We do nothing with your email. There's a donate button. Use it, ignore it. It's up to you. And of course, there is... Uh, uh, the subscribe button there and the bell to be notified about future content. If you click that, then you'll be kept abreast of all the different tests that we do and temp tests and comparisons on this very subject. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.